from the Ministry of the Presidency in Georgetown, this is This Week with the President, with Janelle Carter. Welcome to another edition of This Week with the President, a weekly news magazine which provides you with an in-depth look at the policies, programs, and work of the President of Ghana in his quest to realize the good life for all Guyanese. I'm your host, Janelle Carter. In the news this week, President commissioned 14 soldiers to the rank of officers. President touts communitarianism to fight social ills. And President calls for more education and awareness ahead of local government polls. Communitarianism defined as an ideology which emphasizes an individual's responsibility to the community and the social importance of the family unit is the main thrust of the policy of the David Granger administration. In keeping with this mission, President David Granger on Sunday charged the Congregational Church of Ghana to lead efforts, as it once did, to rebuild communities and villages through education, social services, and leadership. Speaking at the 208th anniversary celebration of the Ghana Congregational Union, which was held at the National Cultural Center on Sunday on the theme, GCU on the move, creating the right image, President Granger said that the Congregational Church has been the midwife of community life and worship for many Christians in villages for over 200 years and has a long-standing record of stewardship. I have been impressed by the extent, by the expanse of the congregations from Albion and Arundel to Zor in Pleasance, what I call the A to Z, from Arundel to Zor. The Congregational Church has been the light of Christianity in Ghana. It is written in Matthew, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Congregations have given light to communities for over 200 years. Congregationalism pioneered religious education for the enslaved population of Ghana, establishing schools to teach the poor, forging strong ties with rural communities and villages, and always working in the interests of the lesser fortunate. This nation is eternally indebted to, the con to congregationalism for the role that it played in educating our people both during and after the dark age of enslavement. Congregationalism forged strong ties with our rural communities and villages. Foreign missionaries came when they were supplemented almost from the start by local leaders. Congregationalism was integrated into the communities in which they ministered. Churches were more than houses of worship there were classrooms for learning. There were community centers. As Ghana prepares to host local government election and to celebrate its 50th independence anniversary, President Granger said that now is an opportune time for the church and Ghana to reclaim the spirit of community solidarity and communitarianism, which characterized the church's early work in Guyana. I turn to the congregations who have over 200 years experience in working with people within communities. You work with these people in the darkest days of enslavement and we look to you to bring light again to these communities of despair. You have the expertise in education, in leadership and in community development. Congregationalists courageously carried Christ's gospel to the victims of the greatest crime against humanity 200 years ago. Their descendants look to the church once again to continue this holy task. They look to the church to become a beacon of hope for their communities, to dispel despondency, to develop strong communities, and to develop our country. 
In keeping with its policy and through programs spearheaded principally by the Ministry of Social Cohesion, the administration will continue to embark on initiatives that support individual growth, strengthen family units and community cohesion and development, all in the interest of building a stronger, more unified Guyana. Far too often, the military is seen only as the top of the law enforcement hierarchy, responsible primarily for the protection of territorial sovereignty. But love and loyalty for country are inherent in the oath of allegiance made by commissioned officers. President Granger reminded 14 officers, recent graduates from the Colonel Ulrich Pilgrim Officers Cadet School, that their primary responsibility is to be leaders in their communities, in service to the nation. Three auto graduates from the program are already participating in training overseas. The nation looks to you to ensure the security of our country, to ensure the safety of our citizens, and to provide service to our communities. You, young Guyanese men and women, are expected to undertake these responsibilities while upholding the six core values of the officer's code, the values of service, loyalty, discipline, honor, trust, and courage. Commander-in-Chief President Granger bestowed instrument of commission on the officers and charged them to embrace the attributes of service to citizens community and nation. The officers who would have successfully completed Standard Officers Course Number 48 are now vested with the legal authority and privileges in accordance with Article 1301 of the Defense Act to function as officers of the force. We know officers, you're expected to embody and uphold the high personal and professional standards of officers. Your conduct will always be subject to scrutiny. I therefore command you to be exemplary leaders of the Defense Force. I encourage you to continue to study, to be disciplined, to be dignified, and to be loyal to our country. Subsequent to the presentation of instruments, the Ghana Defense Force hosted a commissioning parade at Base Camp in Ghana. You. The newest officers of the Guyana Defense Force now possess instruments of commission which constitute the legal authority appointing you as second lieutenants. These instruments allow you to fulfill your responsibilities to our country, to our citizens, and to our communities. These responsibilities are clearly outlined in the Constitution of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana, which stipulates, and I quote, the state's defense and security policy shall be to defend national independence, preserve the country's sovereignty and integrity, and guarantee the normal functioning of institutions and the security of citizens against any armed aggression. Over the past eight months, the administration has taken steps to strengthen the force's engineer corps, which will aid in the construction of bridges and roadways in the hinterland regions to link the coastland and interior areas, and to re-establish the people's militia. These steps, the president said, were all taken in an effort to improve national security in Guyana. The militia will become again the citizens' army. It will be based in communities in every region of our country in order to keep those communities safe. A Civil Defense Corps under the Civil Defense Commission is now being established to assist the government in times of environmental hazard. The Guyanese officers who are members of the graduating class of SOC 48 are expected to uphold the complex mission and responsibilities 
of the Defense Force. President Granger declared open the Standard Officers Course Number 48 in May 2015 at the Colonel Ulrich Pilgrim Officers Cadet School, Base Camp Stevenson, Tamiri. Two Belizean officers and one from St. Kitts and Nevis were among the 20 graduates. President Granger said that this is a symbol of Guyana's commitment to regional integration, which is needed for the protection of small states. The commander-in-chief was also the special guest at a dinner at the GDF, hosted on Thursday evening in honor of the new soldiers. Even before taking office, President Granger stood firmly on the position that governance at the local level needed urgent attention. In fact, local government elections were a prominent feature on the coalition government's 100 days plan. On March 18, Guyanese will finally get the opportunity to exercise their franchise at the polls and elect persons who they believe will best serve their needs at the community level. As this day draw nears, President Granger calls on contesting parties to ensure that constituents are properly educated on the necessary procedures, particularly since a large percentage of the population would never have witnessed the holding of local government elections. Merely handing out um, leaflets is not going to solve the problem. You need multimedia approach. You need to use um, the social media. You need to use television. You need to use face-to-face -face contact. Um, you need to have uh, maybe uh, street fairs and plays explaining um, how to vote and who to vote for, who can be a candidate what local government elections are all about. Local government elections were last held in Guyana in 1994. In July last year, Minister of Communities Mr. Ronald Bulkan piloted the Local Government Amendment Bill, which paved the way for the elections to be held after a 22-year hiatus. We worked in the 10th Parliament, both the APNU and AFC, and uh, we feel it is not something ornamental, we feel it's fundamental to democracy that people in all of the regions and neighborhoods and municipalities should uh, run their own affairs. In addition to holding local government elections, the government will also be creating three new municipalities in Lethem, Mabaruma and Bartico. This is not just a fulfillment of an election promise. This is uh, a democratic in, um, imperative um, that people in this country should be able to run their own affairs. So I'm very happy about it. It's a commitment that we gave to the Guyanese people, and I'm glad that uh, next month, March the 18th, we'll be fulfilling that responsibility. What does the president do all week? Let's take a look inside his diary. On Wednesday, President Granger met with Chancellor of the University of Ghana, Professor Nigel Harris, to discuss matters relating to the repositioning of the institution, such as effective governance, finance, and the maintenance of infrastructure, enhancing research capabilities, and students' experience. On Thursday, members of the Canadian branch of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association paid a courtesy call on the president at his office. The delegation was accompanied by Canadian High Commissioner to Guyana, Mr. Pierre Croy. Well, there's um, a great interest in the Canadian Parliamentary Association of the Commonwealth of the branch uh, to collaborate with uh, Guyana in, in parliamentary uh, um, association of, of uh, or exchange of services, of training, of, uh, of many um, opportunities to, uh, to learn from each other and uh, that was one of the reasons why we came. We've, uh, we've had one of our former MPs who was uh, the instigator of uh, twinning projects between the Canadian legislatures because we have the provincial ones and the federal one and the different countries of the Commonwealth in the Caribbean that would be interested. So we're following through on Mr. Preston's uh, first uh, project and that's why we're here today to try to uh, to make it a little more concrete and bring it forward uh, to, uh, to a very definite agreement between the two legislatures. The British High Commissioner to Guyana, His Excellency Greg Quinn and distinguished Guyanese-born diplomat Sir Sridhar Ramphal also called on the President. Did you know that President Granger is a proud alumnus of the prestigious Queen's College? Well, he is. In fact, his military life started when he joined the Queen's College Cadet Corps. This week, we'll share with you clips of the Head of State reminiscing fondly about time spent at QC during an interview with some current students. Well, the Queen's College was um, an institution which 
uh, more completely looked after the student. I mean, the only thing that we didn't do at Queens was, was sleep. But everything, you know, I mean, you felt part of a family, you felt part of a, an institution, you belonged to houses, you played games, you know, you'd go home and go back uh, to school because there was always some activity um, in the evenings, music or a play or some lecture or something like that. But uh, your whole world was around um, the school. And of course, at that time, the staff was about, probably we were 40% uh, European. And they lived in the houses in the compound. Most of the Europeans lived in the compound. Uh, so it was like almost like a village. I would say that um, as an institution, it provided for almost every aspect of the student's life. And I think that helped to uh, create a sort of culture um, among the persons who went to school at that time. Of course, people built um, lifelong friendships there. Uh, the other important dimension is the academic. And uh, at that time, 60 years ago, Queen's College had the best laboratories in the country. And as a result of that, uh, we were able to generate, I would call a scientific elite, because most of the scientists in the 1950s and 60s, most of them, not all of them, were graduates of the, the Queen's College uh, uh, system, the Queen's College scientific curriculum. Queen's College has indeed maintained a that high standard today. And that brings us to the end of this edition of This Week with the President. Thank you for joining us. For regular updates on the Ministry of the Presidency, go to our website, www.motp.gov.gy. Like our Facebook page, Ministry of the Presidency, and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at MOTP Guyana. I'm Janelle Carter. Do have a safe and productive week ahead. Goodbye.